le a level of transpartisan that, uh, that maybe we haven't been considered before. That sometimes people are not represented by any parties, and yet they are the most impacted by the collusion of corporate and elected power. And they might not be, tra and that might that elected power might be in any number of countries. So we have a wonderful guest, uh, Marty Cobanes from Indigenous Environmental Network, who is working uh, in a model of trans movement work, international work. And I invite uh, Marty to uh, to begin at as he likes. You want to run it from up there while uh, I sit I here? Why don't, I, why don't we uh, make sure we got it going before we get um, too excited about it, huh? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we don't want to. I don't want to screw you up again. Okay, what's that one? You know, this is why they, people have their own AV. Folks who do the, the AV while other people are talking and organizing and stuff. And um, let's see. Uh, Marty, what was the name of that piece? Tar Sands and its effects. Thank you very much, sir. Tar look, oh, oh my God, it's like you called it up. All right. All right, here we go. Let's view, um, play slides. Right. Where's that now? You just have to do it manually. Okay, great. I'm going to do it then manually. So I'll try to cue you as we go along. I'll do my best. All right. My name is Marty Kobanais. Um I, I really want to thank everybody for staying here this late. This is uh, amazing that it's this late and we've been at this all day since uh, the rally out at the Capitol this morning. Um, if you want to go ahead. What are the tar sands? Most people don't know what the tar sands are. When you think about oil and stuff like that, you think... Um, what Jed Clampett was sh shooting at when he was shooting at some food. It comes up through the ground and it's pretty liquid and it's really nice. Reality is, it's that. It looks like molasses. It has the same consistency as molasses. Um, in the winter time it does freeze, so it makes it very hard to extract this oil. Where are the tar sands? The tar sands that we're talking about today are in Alberta. On the screen you see where all the orange is. That is where the oil fields are. The, the actual square miles is about 30 square miles less than the state of New York is what they're projecting it to be. New York is the 26th largest state in the United States. So to give you an idea of how big the tar sands are actually. What companies are involved? As of last couple of years, every oil company in the world is involved in the tar sands. Um, it's not um, just any one, it's BP. BP is actually one of the last ones to go into the tar sands. Um, and when we sit and talk about every oil company, even the, the Norwegian, this, the tar sands was a major factor in the Norwegian elections last year, which doesn't make any sense, but the government owns the oil company in Norway, which owns 51% of the oil comp or the, the gas company over there. So at, um, the presidents, there are eight, nine presidents on the can, or nine candidates running for president, eight of them were against continuing on with the tar sands. The one that was in office was for the pres for tar sands. Obviously, they have new uh, leadership. Um, if you actually want to stay back there, when uh, pipeline companies, we're talking about TransCanada. They're doing. There's a proposal out right now in uh, the State Department with uh, for presidential permit and the EIS system or process, um, which it is, um, and also Enbridge. This is the, where, where I want to talk about this a little bit here is we all remember BP and the offshore oil. And that was controlled by a group called, or supervised and overseen by the MMS. What the problem there was that it was a government steering committee that was made up of all industry people. So basically it was industry people telling the government what to do and how to do it and what they were going to do. Um, we all remember the Michigan oil spill, the Enbridge pipeline in Kalamazoo, Michigan this year. That was 
That one is covered by PIMSA, Pipeline Hazardous Material Safety Administration. Once again, PIMSA is made up of mostly, and well, over 50% of industry-led people. Um, the, the director of PIMSA is Cynthia Quarterman. She is a former Enbridge attorney. Um, so she actually has a, um, a rule on her saying that she cannot deal with anything on Enbridge for two years of her employment at PIMSA. Um, I, so that's why she wasn't even able to talk at when they were doing investigation in the Congress and stuff like that. They couldn't, she couldn't even go to testify for that. Um, the lobbyist um, for TransCanada right now is Secretary Clinton's, when she was running for president, that was her manager who is, who is now the lobbyist for TransCanada. Um, when other companies or other gr groups that I work with asked for through uh, Freedom of Information Act, they were denied the, the request that they, re they put in, which was to get all the emails and, and documents that were put between the lobbyist and the State Department um, through TransCanada. Um, that, that request was denied, um, but the, the incidental part is, the coincidental part of it is, is that three days after the, the Freedom of Information Act request was put in, the lobbyist registered as a lobbyist. He had been working in that job for two years. Okay. This is actually a map of the United States showing where all the pipelines um, through natural gas and crude oil and refined gas goes throughout the United States. There's actually more than that. That is 1974. So that was a long time ago that that was put out. I think we're going to skip the next few here um, and go down to water issues. For those viewing at home, this is going to be the, the version, the quicker version for tonight. Um, some of the processes. In order for the tar sands, obviously when we looked at the pictures, that's, that doesn't make it look like it's going to flow through any pipelines anytime soon, and it doesn't. There's a, quite a process that it has to go through, and it requires a lot of water. It requires four barrels of water to make one barrel of oil. That's to get it out, to steam it out, and everything else which then creates large, large amounts of wastewater um, to which 87% per, of this water that is coming out or being used comes out of the Athabasca River. Um, that's, that's important here. Um, these tailing ponds are approximately 70, mi 70 square miles. Um, if you look on Google Maps or anything else like that, you can see it from space and you can see, see the actual tailings ponds. Um, so you have them 70 square miles, which is big enough, but then it's also 300, 300 feet deep, so it's very large. One tailings pond leaks 17, second, or 17 gallons per second into the Athabasca River, the same river that it's taken out of, or, or 22,380,000 million gallons per year. That's a lot of, a lot. That makes the BP oil spill out on the Gulf of Mexico look really small like a mud puddle. This is a very serious situation. This has been going on for 40 years. This tailing pond is the oldest tailing pond that they, they have. This information that actually comes from the government and industry. So who knows if it's actually maybe higher. Environmental effects. When you, the top left picture is a before and the bottom right is an after. That is what it's doing to the land. It's killing the people. Um, some of the health effects that I, I kind of skipped over were b a lot of bile duct cancers, um, very rare forms of bile duct cancers um, that are normally one out of 100,000 people. A, a tiny community called Fort Chippewan has five cases that, have, that are mostly passed on now um, out of 1,200 people.
why this is important for us in the U.S., um, this is a very inten carbon intensive process to get oil. It consumes enough natural gas to heat 30 million homes. In 2007, tar sands produced 7 or four, 40 million tons of carbon emissions. That is more than most countries. On the back of if you, if you go around and talk to some of the Alberta government people here in D.C., on the back of their business cards it says they only produce, the tar sands only produces one one thousandth of the world's carbon emissions. That the tar sands reduce, produce that amount. And they, they make it sound like it's a good thing. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, most of this oil is right now is being mined out. Um, but if you remember President Clinton talked a little bit, or President Clinton, President Obama talked a couple months ago about how the tar sands are going to be greener. The process of being greener is that they're going to use, uh, it's called SAG-D, where they put the, the chemicals and the water into the earth and they suck the oil out. Well, what, if anyone's familiar with fracking in the United States, it's the same process, is that they're going to not create the... The tailing ponds that they have now, they're going to make, they're going to put the tailing ponds basically into the ground, to which we'll have the same problem, or they'll have the same problems up there that we have now. So we all sit and remember about what gas prices were a few months or a few years ago when the recession started, went up to about $140 per barrel. This is when the tar sands became really profitable because a lot of it will isn't profitable to even go get until it's $120 a barrel. So that, that means we're looking at the $350 to $4, $4 a barrel again, or for, per gallon. We're getting there. It's almost there. How this affects the U.S., we're, gonna, we're being asked to put in more pipelines which are going to record, that are going to put in more leaks and spills. We need to increase our electricity capacity to run the pumping stations. Um, they're disturbing sacred sites. It's threatening the, the U.S.'s largest aquifer called the Ogallala Aquifer in Nebraska. We actually have, uh, we've, the senators in, from Nebraska have written letters asking President or Secretary Clinton um, to actually move the pipeline. Um, eminent domain cases where the companies are, are suing landowners to take their land. Um, this is um, on Friday, last Friday in Oklahoma, um, landowners actually countersued and are suing them back and saying, no, you're not going to take our land. There's a, there are other, other people across all the states that the Keystone XL pipeline is going through that are going to be coming forward soon and saying no and, and countersuing also. What that also does is that it, it keeps us dependent on fossil fuels. Um, President Bush and President Obama have both said that we're addicted to oil, and we are, um, but now is the time that we need to start to wean ourselves off of that oil. That's pretty much the last slide there. Um, what IEN does is we, we work with grassroots people, is what we really work with. We work with on-the-ground people. We don't normally work with the tribal governments in, in too many cases because they're normally subject to economic blackmail, um, basically by the big companies, and saying, we will promise you jobs and everything else. And um, so they take the money for the tribe. Um, but we don't, we don't support that, and so we end up working with the, with the grassroots people. Some of the other places that we're taking on, we're taking on the banking industries that are funding the tar sands. Um, Royal Bank of Canada, Royal Bank of Scotland. Um, there's other groups here in the U.S. that are taking on Citibank. Um, and we're also going across over to Europe, um, taking on stockholders in BP and Shell. Um, we just got done having a staff over there doing the trade agreement between Europe and Canada, making free trade regulations so that they have easier access to, to, to do trades between Canada and Europe, basically for the tar sands. Um, so 
that is where I'm going to end it for today. Um, my information's on the on the screen now. Um, if but due to the lateness of everything, and we're going to be talking more tomorrow, um, that's where I'm going to end it for tonight. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. It's great to th thank you, you panelists. I really appreciate you coming out and sharing a unique, uh, your unique contribution to organizing and movement building. And I hope everybody gets some sleep tonight. I know I need to get some sleep tonight. Okay. All right. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, brother. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here today. That's really great. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have been great to work Thank you guys. 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 Th